George was a very fine fella. He was known as a really good sport. George was never too popular. George was unattractive and short. He couldn't get served in a restaurant if he cried garçon all day. And when he tried to feed the pigeons in the park, the pigeons all flew away. No, nature had not been kind to George. At the age of five, he even found his mother in the arms of another little boy. When other folks danced with the opposite sex, George would dance with a mop. And if he tried to flirt with a lady, she'd invariably call a cop. Yes, the world had rejected George. The only job he could find was as a model for a gargoyle sculptor. George's life was a meaningless sham. He thought he'd be better off dead. Then one day he looked in the mirror and saw a lump growing out of his head. So George went off to a medical man And the medical man did say That the lump was perfectly harmless And the lump would have to stay Yeah, take these placebos When George woke up next morning He found that the lump had grown it now had human features which were handsomer than his own. To go through life like this, thought George, would be a great disgrace. So he pulled his shirt on top of his head and buttoned it over his face. Now this made George appear taller and handsomer than he really was. Suddenly life changed. Waiters became servile. Dogs and pigeons vied for his attention. Vending machines gave him extra change. He was still popular as an artist model, although he refused to appear undraped. George was invited to functions. The hosts believed the hoax. They gathered round our hero and laughed at his worst jokes. Suddenly George was lionized, his social life did jump. The pigeons ate his popcorn and the ladies loved his lump. George became so popular, in fact, that other careers beckoned. Feeling that show business would prove too challenging, George entered politics. A bunch of political backroom boys were hatching up a plan. Their party had no leadership. They had to find a person. George had all the appropriate qualifications. George ignored the issues. He acted like a dunce, but George could kiss the babies and their mothers both at once. George was quickly swept to power. When there were decisions to be made, George left them to others. He just basked in his newfound power and glory. His one regret was that he could never reveal his guilty secret. And what George didn't know was that his advisors were incompetent and corrupt. George never guessed that his colleagues were largely a bunch of crooks. They all had their hands in the cookie jar and frequently fixed the books. As they grew wealthier, the people grew poorer. Some radicals raised a protest, dissension did arise. And when the revolution came, it took George by surprise. Before the great tribunal, 
George and his colleagues stood. Their crimes were documented to deny them did no good. To try and plead his innocence was just a waste of breath. The verdicts all were guilty and the penalties all were death. The guard said, stick your heads in here, and soon those things will drop. The crowd all cried out, hip, hooray, while the blades went chop, chop, chop. Well, George was unattractive again and possibly even shorter than before. And although George lived a long and healthy life, he never saw the lump again. Some other hero rules the land. George doesn't mind at all. But now and then he wishes he were handsomer and tall. Poor George, though he was a real good sport. Poor George, he was really ugly and short. (laughs) 